Hi, my name is Ron Meyer. I'm Professor of Strategic Leadership here at TIAS School for Business and Society. And welcome to Meyer's Management Models, insightful tools to kickstart your thinking. And this installment is all about the Strategic Bets framework. Now, the key question is, how do you select strategic options in an uncertain world? There's a lot of things that you could do. We don't really know what's going to happen in future, and still we need to move ahead. We need to select what to do. Now, for that, we've developed a, a framework called the Strategic Bets Framework. And you're not going to place one bet, you're actually going to have a number of bets. We call that a portfolio of bets, a portfolio of initiatives. These are the different things that you're going to do. And for each one of them, the question is, is it a good idea? Is this a bet that we would like to place? Now, this is a quite complex model compared to some of the other ones, so, but let me just walk you through it. The first question is, is this bet, does it have a high chance that it's going to be successful, or is that a very, very low chance? Now, if something is, has a high chance of success, in other words, a low chance uh, of being a dud, we call that a sure bet sometimes also called a no-regret option. This is going to be positive in almost any future. So if we make a scenario of the future, we say, this is something it's going to always work. This is for sure. It's something which doesn't really have very much risk at all. Now, as we go down, it actually gets less and less certain. So we can go from a sure bet to what we would call a safe bet. It's a secure option, positive in most scenarios. But further down, it only becomes a solid bet. It's an attractive option, works most of the time. And then it goes to a side bet, which it's a speculative option. It'll work in some circumstances, but not in others. All the way to a slim bet. There's not very much chance of this going well. In some circumstances it might work, but in most it won't. Do you see how it goes from high chance to low chance of success, or the other way around, from a low chance of it going wrong to a high chance of it going wrong. Now, how do you choose uh, which ones that you actually want to invest in? There's two things that you need to keep in mind. So on the one hand, there are some reasons why you might be willing to take a risk. These we call the risk-taking drivers. These are the benefits that you're going to get if you dare to take this risk. And of course, we have to look at the financial benefits. So, am I willing to invest here because it's going to pay off financially? But it's not only about making money. There's other benefits that you can also look at. So, it could be engagement benefits. You can get stakeholders on board by doing something. It can be learning benefits. You can learn by doing something. And as you go along, you get more and more insight. And there can be benefits in terms of positioning. By taking a certain position, uh, you're a first mover and you're locking others out. So these all might be reasons why you're willing to take that risk. But there's also reasons why you don't want to take a risk. And those we call the risk-taking dangers. And all of these dangers are actually commitments. And if you take this commitment, you get stuck. Now, of course, these are commitments of your resources, your money, your time, your effort. If you invest them, you can't take them out anymore. But besides resource commitments, you also have political commitments. You're sticking your neck out, and it's difficult to take a side exit. You're also going to have cognitive commitments. You're going to get stuck in a way of thinking and making it difficult to change your mind. And at the same time, you'll also have emotional commitments. You'll fall in love with a certain type of option, and you want to hold on to it. And that's not a very good commitment either. So if you Look at both of these. On the one hand, you want to take calculated risks. You have to. But at the same time, you want to keep your options open by not committing too much. Now, all of this you have to keep in mind as you're placing your bets. And you're not going to place one, but you're going to try to spread your bets. So what do we learn from this framework? Well, first of all, strategic options and selecting strategic options, it is almost like betting. It's like going into the casino. Second, you, when you're placing your bets, when you're thinking about which options to take, you're looking at what types of benefits am I getting from placing this bet. At the same time, you're thinking about how do I place bets in a way that I try to avoid as many commitments as possible. And as you look at the various bets and you're looking at the benefits and the commitments, you're also keeping in mind, is this going to work in all scenarios, in all futures, or only in some? If you put it all together, Strategy and making strategy and selecting strategic options is all about calculated risk-taking. So, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Spread your risks. 
and look at all of the different risks in these three fundamental ways. Well, hopefully a useful model, useful way of thinking about risk-taking. See you again next month.